Hello everyone, welcome to Mindbrain Talks, the place where you'll find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mindbrain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes, but it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today I'll talk about the new neuropsychology videos that I have been working for you. I will just describe all the topics that will be in the following videos, so stay tuned. But now, let's see the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first is the principles of neuropsychology. The second is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third, the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the clinical neuropsychology, the second edition. The fifth is the neuropsychological assessment by Lezak. And the sixth is the clinical neuropsychology by Larry Goldstein and Jenny McNeil. So now let's see the topics that are related with this new neuropsychology series here in Mindbrain Talks. The first is Introduction to the Brain and Neuropsychology. The second is Neurons and Glia Cells. The third is Essentials of Functional Neuroanatomy. The fourth is Basics of Neural Networks. Introduction to Neuropsychological Syndromes. Neurocognitive Functions. Executive Functions. Complex Attention. Memory and Learning. Language and Communication. Visual Organization. Psychomotor Functions. Reasoning and Speed Processing. Social Cognition. Neuropsychology of Emotions. Neuropsychological Assessment. And Neuropsychological Rehabilitation. So, these are the main topics that I will cover in the following videos. These topics are concerned with this new series of neuropsychology that you may find here in Mindbrain Talks. I hope that you enjoy it. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description to see the books that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your mind and to express your thoughts. Let me know what you think about all the topics that you saw here. Welcome to Mindbrain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, welcome to Mindbrain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, psychotherapy, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mindbrain Talks, I discuss and describe different topics from psychology to neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand a little bit more about it. All contents here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, today's video is concerning to the brain. In this lecture, I'll show to you the several major points that we can use to study the brain, okay? But first, let's see the books that I recommend to you. The first, it's the Principles of Neuropsychology. The second, it's the seventh edition of the Fundamentals of Neuropsychology from Brian Cold and Ian Wishaw. 
The third book is the third edition of the Neuropsychology Handbook. The fourth is the Handbook of Clinical Neuropsychology, second edition. The fifth book is the Neuropsychological Assessment from Mezak. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology from uh, Laura Gonstein and Jane McNeil. So, now let's see um, what is the brain and how neuropsychology and neuroscience regards the brain. Alright, so let's go! So, the brain is the physical organ that makes all the mental processes available or possible. Uh, mental processes, I'm talking about cognition, emotion, behavior, psychological needs, interpersonal relationships, and so forth. Also, neuropsychology and neuroscience regard the brain as the organ of the mind. And the brain is composed by neurons and glial cells which are described as the nerve cells and the fundamental unities of the nervous system. So the brain has approximately 100 billion neurons and each neuron may connect with around 10,000 other neurons. Neurons are connected by synapses, but we will see this in the future. The brain is divided in three major levels. Hindbrain or brainstem, which contains medulla oblongata, the pons and cerebellum. Midbrain, which contains the substantia nigra and the superior and inferior colliculi. And the forebrain, which contains the telencephalon, composed by the basal ganglia, limbic system and the cerebral cortex. And the diencephalon, which contains the thalamus, hypothalamus and mammillary bodies. So the brain is also composed by several layers of tissues called meninges. Some of these tissues are very important in protecting the brain if some major traumatic event occur. So the brain also has a complex vascular system which takes the blood to the brain and this blood leaves the necessary nutrients that nerve cells also need to function. So the brain also has four major ventricles which are filled with cerebral spinal fluid. So the cerebrospinal fluid is very important in keeping the brain healthy by removing the dead nerve cells. So now let's see the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex has two hemispheres, left and right, and these hemispheres have a folded structure, which are called gyri and salchi. Cerebral cortex is divided also in four major areas, the frontal lobes which are responsible mainly for the higher order mental processes, such as personality, executive functions, and so forth. The occipital lobes, which are concerning the functions of vision and visual processing system. Parietal lobe, which are concerned to the sensory perception and spatial integration. And finally, the temporal lobe, which are mainly responsible for memory, language skills, and emotional processing. So, the cerebral cortex is divided into four major areas frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and temporal lobe. These major areas are responsible for all mental processes and neurocognitive functions. So, why the brain is so important to neuropsychology? As you know, neuropsychology is the intersection between psychology and neuroscience. And neuropsychology is concerned to the exploration of the relationships between mind, brain and behavior, which could be normal and abnormal, but essentially the abnormal conditions are related to neuropathological diseases. So the neuropsychology explores the relationships between mind, brain and behavior through several instruments. One of them are standardized neuropsychological tests or self-rating and observational scales, brain imaging and electroencephalography. These are the four major methods that neuropsychologists use to explore how the mind and how the brain influences behavior. So now let's take a brief summary, okay? So the brain is defined as the most complex organ because it's the organ that allows humans to have cognition, emotion, behavior and social relationships. It has several divisions, as we saw, the brainstem, the forebrain and the cerebral cortex has several lobes. So, we also saw that the neuropsychology is the scientific discipline that studies mind, brain and behavior. So, why are we fascinated by this organ? The brain, it's the organ of the mind. 
It's because we have functional brain that we can dream, that we can think, that we can fantasize and reflect upon the wonders of life. So the brain is the organ that allows all humans to have a higher order abilities and mental processes such as imagination, thinking, fantasizing and emotions. So the brain is the biological organ that allows us to take a step further in the animal hierarchy. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see the video description regarding today's theme if you want to see the books and the manuals that I recommend to you. Also, if you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You can use the comment section below to express your minds and to express your thoughts. Let me know about all the things that you saw here. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!